So in the coming weeks, we have a stack of CPU cooler reviews to look forward to on the channel. Both CPU air coolers and AIOs will be going head to head on our new test systems. The latest cooler to feel the heat is a new AIO from Cooler Master. The Cooler Master Master Liquid 360L Core RGB is a budget 360mm offering with triple 120mm fans, dual ARGB lighting and an extremely low price tag. But will it pass the test on the 7950X? Let's find out. So this Cooler Master Master Liquid 360L Core ARGB is available also in a 240mm version. Obviously that will be called the 240L Core ARGB. That's how I'm going to refer to them as well during the review because the full name is a bit too long. So I'll be calling this the 360L Core. I've got to say straight off the bat with this review that this CPU cooler could be either one of the very best that we've ever reviewed or it could be one of the worst and the reason i say that is because of the price so taking into consideration that this is from cooler master that is a well-known brand this is really really cheap for a 360 millimeter aio cpu cooler the msrp price of this is around 105 pounds it's available in black or in white both the 240 and the 360 mil versions are available in the two different colors but not only is it pretty cheap at 105 pounds anyway for a 360 millimeter cooler with RGB lighting. Currently, while filming this review on Amazon, you can pick this up at £88.99, which is the same price as the 240mm MSRP. So that is, or it sounds like, an absolute bargain at that price. Under £90 for a 360mm cooler is ridiculously cheap, but that's no good if the performance isn't there. The 360L Core ARGB features a new Cooler Master Generation S dual chamber pump with a redesigned copper base, boosted water flow and a clean minimalist design to the pump cover, an expanded radiator surface for accelerated heat dissipation, three upgraded Cooler Master 120mm ARGB fans for optimal radiator performance and it's also supplied with a tube of Cooler Master Cryofuse premium thermal paste which is a good thing straight away because if you ever have to remount the cooler or reinstall it you should have some spare thermal paste left over. It doesn't come with any pre-applied to the copper base of the cooler, but you get a tube of thermal paste in the box. I'll go over some quick specifications of the cooler, but if you want to see the full specifications and the full features, make sure you head over to kitguru.net, our website, where there will be a full detailed written review, and that'll cover all the full specifications, other features, and the all-important performance charts will be over on the website as well. A brief rundown of the specifications. So the supported C CPU sockets, so this obviously supports all current Intel and AMD desktop platforms, so LJ1700, 1200, 115X and some earlier sockets from Intel, AMD AM5, AM4 and AM3. There's no high-end desktop support with this CPU cooler. The cold play is made from copper. The radiator is manufactured from aluminium. The pump connector is a uh, three-pin connection, so voltage control on the pump, and the pump speed goes up to about 2,600 RPM. It has uh, rubber tubing with braided sleeving and articulating fittings at the CPU block end. The tubing length is approximately 400 millimeters, and it comes with just a three-year warranty which is a bit short compared to some more premium coolers that come with six year plus warranty. So the warranty is a bit short. In terms of the fans, so they are a rifle bearing with a four pin PWM control and a speed range of between 650 to 1750 RPM. Maximum airflow is 71.93 cubic feet per minute and max air pressure is 1.86 millimeters H2O. Maximum output of noise is 27.2 decibels. In the box along with the cooler, you get some fans so with the 360 version you get three fans with the 240 you get 220 mil fans rgb lighting effects on the fans are controlled by a standard three pin five volt header you also get a uh, splitter cable so an rgb splitter cable for three pin five volt this actually splits from one to five so you can connect three fans the pump 
and another RGB product to that cable that uses standard three pin five volt headers. The Intel backplates are included there. There's no AMD backplate included because it uses the stock AM5, AM4 retention bracket. You do get upper mounting brackets for AM4, AM5 that will hook onto the standard upper mounting bracket. You also get some Intel upper brackets and then some standoffs for Intel installation. There's some thumb screws there for actually screwing the cooler down to the CPU socket. Uh, you also get some small fan screws, so they're small screws for mounting the radiator into the top of the case. You get a pack of screws to mount the fans to the radiator. There is something I do really like about these screws that Cooler Master include with the cooler. They've been doing this for quite a number of years and I'm, I'm surprised it's not caught on with some other cooler manufacturers. But if you see these, go through the fans and screw the fan to the radiator. But if you notice the head on here is quite large, so it's a thumb screw, which is okay. It can be tightened up by a Phillips screwdriver as well. But if you see inside the head, there's another thread in there. So you might be wondering what that's for, but this, uh, this works really well if you want to mount the cooler to the front of the case. So sometimes when you're mounting at the front of the case, you've got to kind of, you know, hold the fans and the radiator and line them all up with the front panel, try and push the screw through the fan, the front panel through the fan and then into the radiator. But with these Cooler Master screws, you can screw the fans to the radiator, then just hold the whole thing up behind the front panel and then use the smaller screws to screw through the front panel into these screws. So it does make it a bit easier if you are installing this behind the front panel with the fans facing outwards as intakes. So that's something nice to see. I'm really, really surprised that nobody else has caught on with that. Also included is the uh, thermal paste as well. So this is Cooler Master Cryo Fuse. I'm not sure exactly how much is in there, but I think there will be enough for at least a couple of installations. You also get the uh, installation manual and the warranty card. Another thing I really like about Cooler Master CPU coolers is these clips as well. These actually hold the RGB cables together. So you push the RGB cables together. In fact, I can just show you on one here. So you connect the RGB cables together and these can be really easy to pull apart. They really don't hold anything. They have no like retention system built in, but Cooler Master supplies these. And again, this is something Cooler Master has been supplying with coolers for a number of years. Push the connections together and then you just simply push that over the top and then that holds the RGB connection together. I think that's something as well. I'm surprised that more CPU cooler manufacturers haven't cottoned on to that idea and don't, in, uh, don't include them with their coolers because they must cost virtually nothing to manufacture and they do a really good job. The only other thing that comes with the cooler is a four pin PWM splitter cable. So this is a three way splitter with the 360 mil versions. Good thing about these cables is with the black versions, all the cables are black but with the white versions, all the cables are white. It sounds stupid to say that a little bit, but I recently reviewed a new NZXT Kraken cooler and some of the cables that came with that, so the white version of that, came with some black cables, the ones that connected up to the pump housing, which looked a bit out of place. With Cooler Master, with the white cooler, all the cables are white. And also the uh, screws and the brackets and fittings and stuff are a bit different between the black and the white. So with the black versions, you get kind of black chrome screws and mounting brackets. But with the white version, they're all bright silver, which looks good with the white version. And obviously the black chrome ones look good with the black version, which is it's all the nice little touches like that that make the difference with these kind of things. So I like that. And obviously I like these RGB cable clips and these screws with the threads inside. So let's take a closer look at the cooler. So as I said previously, the radiator is aluminium, 27 millimeters thick. I do like these Cooler Master radiators. The look of them is a little bit different to some of the others. The uh, coating on this is really nice. It's got kind of a, a textured finish to it and it's like a uh, kind of a satin finish. You've got a slight sheen to it. It's not a dull matte, but it's not like really glossy. It does look like a really nice high quality finish. I like the look of that. On uh, both the sides, you get the Cooler Master logos. 
and you can see it is a dense fin stack on the radiator so technically it should perform pretty well that radiator the tubing is approximately 400 millimeters long at the cpu block side you've got these articulating 90 degree fittings it does have braided sleeving on here but at either end it's just kind of finished off with some heat shrink wrap that you'd normally find on cables rather than like a proper crimped fitting on there which is a little bit cheaper but this is a cheap cooler so you've got to expect some things like that the pump housing is quite a minimalistic looking design it has a master liquid logo on there and then the cooler master halo this is cooler master's latest generation s dual chamber pump inside and you can see at the bottom there is a solid copper base plate. And then in terms of connections to the pump, so there isn't a lot, like some coolers you see now, you have hundreds of wires coming out and you've got USB connections and all that. Cooler Master's kept it pretty simple, which I do like. Uh, so you've got a three pin, five volt ARGB header there. So you can connect that directly to a motherboard ARGB header, or if you have some kind of standalone ARGB um, controller, you can connect that up to that, no problems, no proprietary connections to worry about. And there's also a three pin fan header connection for the pump as well, so to control the pump speed. And that obviously with it being three pin will be voltage control. So the, uh, the actual cooler is quite a nice looking, minimalistic design. I'm quite keen on this finish on the radiator. It does look a bit different to some other radiators that are out there. Then in terms of the fans, they're quite a basic looking fan, but again, what can you expect for the price of this cooler? They do have some anti-vibration rubber mounting points. Again, you've got the Cooler Master Halo logo in the middle, and you've got an opaque blade design. Inside are RGB LEDs, so the opaque blade diffuses the RGB lighting. It's just a single RGB lighting zone on the blade. Some fans may have a couple of zones, like a ring on the outside and the blades, but this is just a standard single RGB lighting zone. On the rear, there's not much, just the sticker on the back. The fan speed range is between 650 to 1750 RPM. And again, pretty standard connections on here as well. So it's a three pin, five volt ARGB. Again, this can be connected to either a motherboard header controlled with motherboard software or to a standalone ARGB connection. The fans are PWM controlled though. So you should have good control over the fine tuning of this fan speed. And again, it's just a standard four pin PWM header. As you can see, I've got the white version already installed on the test bench. I'm not gonna go into great detail of the installation process in this review because we have covered this Cooler Master installation process several times. Um, if you do wanna check out the installation process, best thing to do is go back and check out one of our previous Cooler Master reviews. Uh, you'll be able to see the installation process on some of the videos and also over on the website. So I'm not gonna go into any great detail, but basically all you need to do is attach the fans to the radiator, find a suitable place in the case to mount the radiator, install the correct bracket, whether it's Intel or AMD to the CPU block. And then it's just a simple case of adding some thermal paste to your CPU and then tightening the block down in position. Then obviously connecting up some wiring, but it is very simple. It's a quick installation process. Took me probably five minutes to install the cooler. I have installed these several times, so it does kind of come like second nature to you when you uh, install a lot of CPU coolers. But if you follow the installation guide, you will have no problems. It's a really easy, simple cooler to install. And there's no additional software either. So to control the RGB lighting, it's all done by either the motherboard software or a standalone RGB controller. Before we get onto the thermal performance results, I just want to quickly mention something. So the original sample we got of this black version of the 360L core ARGB, we had some really poor thermal performance results in our tests. We thought it was a bit odd, so we reached out to Cooler Master. They also agreed that they expected better performance than this, and they sent us a new sample to retest. We retested the new sample and there was a slight improvement. So let's start by looking at the noise output because this will give us a good idea of thermal performance 
based on noise levels. The Cooler Master 360L Core is the loudest cooler so far we have tested on the new test bench. At 55 decibels maximum noise output it can become distracting and annoying quite quickly. So you will need to tune the fan speed to your preferred noise level if you want to run the cooler at a constant fan RPM. With the fan still at maximum RPM and with a fixed CPU overclock in place the Cooler Master 360L Core ARGB performance sits towards the bottom end of our chart. With an average CPU temperature of 73 degrees C it's beaten by some smaller coolers at maximum fan RPM. Tuning the fans to 40 decibels noise output doesn't help with performance if anything it shows that compared with its competitors the performance is quite poor with an average CPU delta of 79 degrees C. During the test CPU temperature was consistently over 100 degrees C. In the PBO test the important metrics are clock multiplier and cooling power as the temperature delta between coolers will be very close. Again the performance isn't great with PBO enabled the average clock multiplier is at 51 times while the package power is at 197 watts. Some older and smaller coolers are able to perform at this level which is a bit disappointing. So it's a bit of a strange one to sum up this uh, 360L core from Cooler Master because on one hand it is really cheap the MSRP at under £105 by itself that's quite cheap well it's really cheap actually for 360mm AO but as I said previously at the start of this video this 360mm version in black is currently on offer at Amazon for under £90 which is just ridiculously cheap for a 360mm AO from a well-known brand such as Cooler Master but as you've seen from our thermal performance testing performance on the 7950X is just not there maybe on lower power CPUs it wouldn't be uh, showing up how poor the performance is but on a high power CPU like the 7950X it's not the kind of cooler you want to be using. Um, you could say that is down to the price it is a budget cooler so it should be used with a budget CPU but when you look at other coolers from deep cool like the LT720 the Endorphi Navis F360 and the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360, they're all around a similar price and have much better thermal performance compared to this Cooler Master unit. So the thermal performance really lets it down for me. However, there are some really good points about this CPU cooler. Obviously, you've got the RGB lighting effects. The RGB lighting looks pretty good compared to some coolers. There's some coolers that are higher priced than this and don't have as good RGB effects. You have two zones of RGB lighting. The installation process is quick. There's those little details as well. So there's obviously somebody at Cooler Master that regularly builds systems, installs coolers because of these things like these screws with the thread in the top that make it easier to install this at the front of the case and those clips that hold the RGB connections together. They are really good little features but it's just a shame that they are almost wasted on this with the performance but like I say maybe on a lower powered CPU that performance isn't going to be as bad or it's not going to be shown up how poor it can be on a higher powered CPU. Probably at its current price if it stays like that for a while under £90 is a bargain so I might be tempted to buy it if I'm building a system with lower power and a lower spec CPU but certainly wouldn't consider this if I was using a high powered CPU like the 7950X, 7900X or something from Intel like a Core i9, maybe even 13700K might struggle on something like that. But it is a really tricky one, like I say, to sum up. It is so cheap, it's almost unbelievable, but the performance just isn't there. So let me know what you think of the Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 L Core ARGB in the comment section. Would you buy this cooler at the MSRP or at the reduced price that it's at at the moment? If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the Kit Guru channel. If you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to the store, pick up some merch, or you can even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.